Hello there, welcome back. It's time to make an update video to the course because Adobe has brought in some new generative AI features which are currently available only in Photoshop beta. So remember, like I told you in the starting of the course, anytime something for a test comes out, like a new feature, it's first put inside this app, which looks like Photoshop, but this is Photoshop beta. And then once everything is done, it shifts over to the main Photoshop. So right now we are inside Photoshop beta and let's see some of these new features. There has been a lot of commotion about these features because what um, Adobe has basically done is it has put pretty much the entire Firefly uh, software that it has, the image, uh, the text to image generation software, uh, through which the generative AI tools that I've been showing you till now, like generative fill were powered. But now it's not like just any tools. The whole of Firefly is pretty much inside Photoshop. So, you know, for example, this is Firefly, like Firefly, like I've shown you before. If you go to firefly.adobe.com and its main purpose is that this is Adobe's text to image generation tool, just like mid journey. So if I was to like write something like, let's say beautiful forest, and then, you know, it just gives you out the results right here. And now you can do something like this also inside Photoshop. So you can actually generate images right from scratch. But that, as a photographer, I don't think it's very important for most of the people. In fact, I'm not too impressed with most of the changes that have come, even though there was a lot of commotion inside it. But I'll still be showing you something which I feel is definitely important for photographers. You can see, right, we've got these images. Now we can do that inside Photoshop also, like I'll be showing you later. You don't have to go and do it on the browser through Firefly, but I'll be showing that at the end, okay? Let me show the important features and the important changes first, because there have been some important upgrades to, to the existing Gen AI tools that I've been showing you like Generative Fill, okay? So one of those changes is that now, not only can you just type in a prompt and change something in the photograph, just like we've been seeing through generative fill, you can actually give Adobe a reference image so that it gets closer to what you want. So let me give you an example for this. So here's a shot you know, of one of my uh, studio portrait clients. And here, let's say for some reason, okay, we need to change the shoes. So till now, we've been seeing this is pretty straightforward. So I can select something like a lasso tool. Let me just zoom in slightly, okay. So let's say we want to change this to your sneakers, okay? So I can make this selection. I can hold down shift and make an add to the selection for the other shoe. And then we're gonna get our generative fill box here, the contextual text bar. So I can hit this and I can say sneakers, okay? And that should be enough. So let's see what this gives us. All right, so you can see that this looks pretty good, right? Looks pretty real also. Not only did it just change the shoes, it takes care of things like shadows. It even, I think, made some changes to, uh, you know, these uh, denim trousers itself. So just see, can you see? So when it replaces it, it kind of makes it very, very realistic. We, of course, get three options here. So let's see all three. This also looks very real, right? And just imagine we are so zoomed in and still I think this one doesn't look good, but these first two look really good. If I was to zoom out, I mean, nobody out there would be able to say that this is not real, right? It looks pretty good. Maybe it has uh, reduced the size of the feet, but that's okay. But overall it looks real, but here's the thing, right? And here's how the new features are important, uh, which can even make this better. So let's take an example. Let's say I'm sh doing this shoot. And then this, this guy tells me that Kush, I have, you know, uh, I just forgot my, red sneakers that I really wanted to use for the shoot. So what can we do here, right? So now what I can tell him is because, do you see this option here? Like it says reference image, this was not there. When you used to type in something, there was nothing here, but now you have this, okay? So now what I can tell him is, I can tell him, okay, you know what? We'll do your normal shoot with your black shoes, but when you go home, you send me a photograph of those red sneakers. And then I can use that as a reference image along with the prompt and it's gonna give me results close to the actual sneakers, the red sneakers that this person owns. So let's take an example of that, okay? So let me show you the reference image that we'll be using for this prompt, All right? So I've just got this image from the internet, just like a normal red sneaker. So let's say this is the reference image that we're gonna be using. So what I'm gonna do is, let me just hit Control Z to undo till the time we get our selection back like this. And now 
Once I hit generate a fill, remember, we have this option here, this new option of red reference image. So I'm gonna hit this now and then select that red sneakers image from my computer. So I'm gonna hit choose image and I can select this particular image. And now if I just type in, I can just type in again red sneakers, but this time because we've given a reference image, it's gonna maintain and try to give out an output which is as close as possible to the real deal. So let's hit generate now and you can see right this time, can you see as it's generating, it has, it shows me that yes, we're using this reference image here. So let's wait for the results here. By the way, it keeps showing me this time to update thing. I've tried to update Photoshop beta, but somehow it's not happening. You can see it's showing me update failed, but that message is just not going away, okay? But these are the main updates anyways. But you can see, right? Now, if we see the reference image here, right, this is pretty close. Let me just zoom in. It's pretty close to this. So there's, we're taking away the guesswork basically from generative fill and making it more accurate. Let's see the uh, three results that we've got. This looks okay. Of course, like before we've seen, you have to sometimes try out multiple things, okay? And I'm still a believer that these things don't 100% work when you do so many things, okay? You still need to know the manual approaches to Photoshop, like adding more of a shadow, using the drop shadow functions, which I teach in a lot of my other courses, okay? But this is not bad. So if I was to like zoom out, you can see, right? Maybe, you know, we can uh, decrease the brightness a bit and all and make it uh, closer to something what we want. But this is the whole point that now you can use this reference image, which according to me, is the most practical upgrade that Adobe has done, which is actually important for photographers. But also, let's look at some other updates. Also, before I go on to the next update, there's a mini update within this also, okay? So just see, let's say I like this result. And again, let me just zoom in, okay? But let's say I want more sharpness here, more details here. So now when you get these results, okay, you can just hit this option, which is kind of just, basically like upscaling the quality or the resolution of whatever it generated. So it's just gonna become more sharper because one of the issues with the generated, uh, generated fill generations was that the resolution was not that great. But now when you hit this, you can immediately see that this is, you know, the, the details have definitely got much better. And of course, the quality of this is also gonna depend on your reference image. Remember we are using here. So suppose let's say you say, okay, Kush, this does not look too real. But if you see the original image, right? It's pretty close to that. But here's what I have done with, uh, I have realized with my experiments that when you give it the reference image, okay, try your best to even keep things like the angle, the lighting, or at least the brightness of the uh, product, you know, equal to whatever was there in the original image. Like the closer it is to the lighting and the style of the original image and the angle, the better results you get here, okay? Here I'm just kind of showing you a quick demo, but you can see now we've been able to, uh, you know, increase the quality of this output also. And also if you like any of these results and you don't want to type in the whole thing and give, the, give it the reference image again, you can also go to these three dots now and you can just hit generate similar. So let's say I like the first results and then on based of that, I don't want to write everything again, I just want to tell Adobe that, listen, this was a good result. Want something similar? Let's have three more variations. All right, so this is what we've got. And I think this time, this looks really good, right? You can see here. I think this is looking much better. I mean, this is not bad. And this is also not bad. But I think the first one looks really new. And now if we compare it to the actual image, like, wow, I think this is as close as it can come, right? So it's good. And... So this was one of the things. Now, another thing that I wanna show you, so let me quickly just zoom out. I'm gonna just flatten this image, okay? So that we can proceed to the next one. And now, by default, your contextual bar here, remember it always used to show this remove background, so there's nothing new here, but just see this. So if I hit remove background, first of all, the good thing is, Adobe says that this has got better, so that itself is an upgrade, that now it's able to remove the background in a much better way, like you can see here, right? So it does a better job around the complex parts like uh, the hair. But now we also get this button, or actually two buttons, which we 
didn't get before. One is you can import a background. So this is fairly simple. It's like, let's say if you have another image, maybe you just had a plain yellow background which you wanted to replace and that image was already there on your computer. You can just import it and it's gonna come behind the subject. But that is not too important because that has got nothing to do with AI. Okay, but here, I can just hit this generate background button and now we again get this generative fill type uh, dialog box and I can type in here yellow background. Now here's the thing, okay? This is what I want Adobe to do. If this update really has to be something that is really good and useful the related to the background, I would have loved to seen, uh, love to see the reference button image, uh, the reference sorry, the reference image button right here also, like even in this. But here we don't see that. So again, here, if I hit generate, we are again back to the old way of doing the generative fill, which is we're just relying now on Adobe's AI uh, prowess to just see what kind of results it gives. But just imagine if I actually had a yellow backdrop here of maybe another studio shoot, or if I just find from the internet, you know, like a proper seamless, yellow paper look, which we're not getting here, right? This just looks, doesn't look too good. But if we had that image and we can put that as a reference image then generate it, it'd be great. Now you must be thinking, Kush, why can't we just do that by selecting the subject like you've shown before, by selecting the background, it doesn't work too well that way. So I'm just gonna show you what I mean by that. Uh, but point is these two buttons are new. We can again see the three variations. This also doesn't look too bad, but again, we're not getting that proper realistic look with this, okay? Now what I'm saying is, so let me just get back to our original. So till now, because we don't have that reference image option in this particular dialog box or this uh, bar that we see, so we still have to do things the old way. That means we have to go to edit or rather select subject, like I've been showing you before, right? And then we can it's gonna make a good selection. We can inverse the selection. So we can select inverse, it selects the background. And now I can type in generative fill and give it a reference image. But what's gonna happen is because this touches the subject, right? Because the selection is touching the subject, it's not, it's gonna sometimes change things in the subject also. So this doesn't work too well, okay? And, and we've seen this before. Sometimes, you know, it sh shouldn't touch. And in order to avoid this, a lot of people, what they do is after this, they go to select, they go to modify and they go to contract. So I can actually contract the selection by let's say 20 pixels. So it kind of moves away, right? If I was to zoom in, it's not touching anymore. But now if we produce the changes, yes, we have the reference image, but what about this part? What about this little part that is left? If it doesn't change this properly and oftentimes it doesn't affect that, then also it's bad. So the previous case is bad because it's touching the subject and it can change the subject, at least the edges, okay? And this is bad because then it doesn't change the edges. So it's still the old way basically right now. So I would have loved to see, see the reference uh, image button there. Then it would be a real, real game changer, okay? But anyway, this is again one of the upgrades, those two buttons. All right, so let me just get rid of the selection. Uh, another thing that Adobe has said is that the object selection tool, and they always say that, that it has got slightly better. So we've seen the object selection tool also, and here, if I select, let's say, you know, something like this, they say that now it's better able to select a particular uh, thing that stands out, a particular object. So let's see if it's able to, you know, maybe uh, pick out the trousers, right? So I'm getting this thing which says could not detect objects in the scene. That's because we gave us gave it a very less uh, area, but it has still picked out the trousers well. And maybe now I can. I think, yeah, it has probably improved, but you can see here, right? It has taken up that a bit of the shoe also. So sometimes you will have to kind of go back to your quick selection tool, hit Alt and just take away from the selection, okay? So it's not all perfect, but I mean, they are definitely working on it, okay? And maybe now let's say I can type in blue denims. And of course here, now I could have given a reference image if I had a particular set of denims in mind. Okay, so that's how things are working. It's a combination of a lot of things that will have to go together. All right, so yes, you can see this looks pretty good. Or three variations, one, two, I think these are the next two made it look too skinny. I think this was 
really, really nice. And finally, so it's become really quick, right? Because if I just, you know, let's say, let me flatten this image. And, you know, we've made so many changes, remove background. Also just wanted to show you this remove background and then generating a new background, it kind of also works in normal surroundings. So I can type in, let's say, office, okay? And it does a fairly okay job. But like I said, if they provide the reference button, it'd be great. All right, so yeah, you can see it's trying to do its best. Let's quickly see the three variations before we talk about the next upgrade. Something like this, right? It's not too bad, yes, I know. Not looking too real, but not too bad also. Especially if you consider this was literally two clicks and writing one word, okay? If you go better with prompts, more descriptive, probably give you uh, some better results. Also, let me show you the next upgrade now. So the next change, like I mentioned at the start of the video, is that Firefly pretty much now is inside Adobe. And this is Firefly 3, the version 3, which is the latest Firefly, okay? So here, let me just open up something new. So anything actually is fine. Doesn't really matter. So let's say we have this. And now we can, we have this little button here, okay? So if you go all the way, if you in Photoshop beta, if you look down here, you have this thing which says generate image. And here, I can pretty much generate anything just like I showed you with Firefly. So beautiful forest, okay? And either content type, I can choose art, which is gonna give me probably stuff like this. If I choose photo, it's gonna be photorealistic. And you can, again, you can give a reference image if you had something already in mind, just like we've seen before. And you can also have some effects that you can give. And basically all this is within Firefly also in the browser version. It's just that it's much more compact here inside Photoshop. But right now, if I just don't give it a uh, reference image, just hit generate. Again, we're just relying on it. But basically this is like kind of mid-journey, uh, Firefly, uh, stable diffusion, software like that built in within Adobe. But again, not too great for photographers because how many people are going to be using and doing this? But you know, if you want to generate probably backgrounds and then shift over this background to another image, probably this can be uh, helpful. And finally, there's one more change which has got to do with the adjustment brush. So let's also see that. So again, coming back to this image, let me just quickly flatten this so that we don't have any issues with working with layers. And let's say uh, I want to again work on some particular areas and I want to brighten some things, darken some things. So now it's just that it's nothing too great to be frank, this feature that I'm going to be showing you, just that they've made the process slightly quicker, okay? Because earlier, let's say if I wanted to reduce the brightness on these denims, then what I would have to do is make a selection, then open up an adjustment function like brightness, contrast, and then change the brightness, which doesn't take too much time. But now what I can do is if I go to brushes, okay? And here, if I go to adjustment brush tool, so what they've done is basically, I can hit this thing that says select object. So I can select the full subject also, but I can select an object first. So think of it like this, they've basically put this entire process into one tool here. That means the object selection tool that we usually access like we saw before, okay, we can, you know, just do it with the adjustment brush also. So it has just selected this particular thing. So you can see right now, what are we doing here? You can just literally do it with a single click. Again, I don't consider this as a big upgrade because how much time does the other process also take it? It's fairly quick. It's, it's just that instead of two to three clicks, now it's pretty much one click. So let's quickly see one more example of this. So let's say this time I want to do something different, which is instead of changing the brightness, let's say I want to change the color of only the shoes. Okay, so this time we can use the function of hue saturation. So how, do you, how you do that is go to this option which says add new adjustment. And then I'm going to select hue saturation. Then we're going to select the object, in this case, the shoes. So let me just select one shoe here. Otherwise you would obviously do it for both the shoes by hitting shift and then selecting the second one also, or just for, you know, being quick, let's just select one and then we get this, I can change the color. So again, just makes it more convenient, right? So I hope that you like these changes and I hope that this video helped you out. I'll see you in the next one when some more upgrades are made by Adobe. Till then, goodbye.